shocking discovery for the residents of rural English. A meteor said to be weighing millions of tons and heading towards a small town. In light of the impending meteor, the mayor of Pudgley has released the following statement. Tell Linda that I love her, and my wife that I love Linda, and also I'm sorry. <laughs> Pudgley has always been considered a bit of a shithole, but after becoming a little crater, it will just be, well, a really shithole. Well, you know, it's a shame they had to cancel the match because of the meteor, but at the end of the world, it's not the end of the day. <laughs> Get on Twitter a sec. We're very nervous about the rotating pool of hate heading towards the UK. But enough about Donald Trump. Oh! Yeah. I just, just answer the question. May I finish my point? Just answer the question. No, this entire program. I've been interrupting my point. I'd like to finish my point. Actually, no, I'd like to finish my point. I, for one, think the meteor is a rather good idea. Well, so do I. Good. Hey, uh. We're Union J. And we're here in the live lounge with our new Cherry. Go for Pudgley! Whoa, whoa, whoa. me your baby! Me your baby, drive me crazy, person, baby, 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 Luckily I live every day like it's my last, so expect more drive sign tunes and witty banter. <laughs> I spend my last hour alone, so why not phone in and tell us your favourite memories from Pudgley? I've got one here from Bella Whiting. Uh, Bella says... I'll never forget that weird morning in the local coffee shop. Ooh. Do I recognise you from somewhere? Oh, well, I did used to work the auction house oh, down the road, but that's all behind me. Now I work in this coffee shop. That's my life. <laughs> I guess we could call you a bit of an auction stuff barista. <laughs> <laughs> no, what would you like? <laughs> could, could I have a latte? A latte? Please, yes. That will be 120, madam. Yeah. Um, Do I hear 140? <laughs> <laughs> Here, 140, 160 now. 160, please. Lady adjusting her toupee, 160. 180. 180 for the latte, 180 right there. Two pounds now. Two pounds, please. It's my coffee, 120 or two pounds? Two pounds for the lady in the till, 250. 250 right there, and the three pounds. Three pounds, I've got three pounds for the amorous gentleman. Four pounds now. Four pounds for him. Four pounds for the boy from year seven. Five pounds. Five pounds for the walking teapot. Yes, six pounds. Six pounds for this delicious cafe like the man. Six pounds for the man and his enormous baby. Seven pounds for the Seven pounds, please. And seven pounds for the alien with rickets. Eight pounds. Eight pounds. Eight pounds, please. Eight pounds for the enormous baby and the man. Nine pounds. Nine pounds for this delicious cafe latte. Nine I'm pounds for your I'm going to be late. I'm being massively held up. I mean, really not quite sure. Do I have a phone, please? <laughs> Do I have a bit on the phone? Go on. Nine pounds. Ten pounds, please. Not ten in the front of you. Ten pounds. Nine pounds. Nine pounds. Nine pounds. It's going once, twice, sold to the woman on the phone. I flew in from Zurich. <laughs> there is your latte, madam, just 37 pounds. Thank you. Can I interest you in a blueberry muffin? <laughs> They're on special offer right now, just two pounds. Two fifty. Do I hear three? <laughs> Another memory here. This one's from a young Simon Cochrane. I had some of my best times at Pudgley <laughs> Primary School. The field trips were unforgettable. <laughs> I'm sure they were, Simon. <laughs> Swash. Backwash. Swash. Backwash. Longshore drift. Oh my God, Mike. Mike, come take a look at this! Oh, look, we need to collect the kids from the station, otherwise they're going to miss the geography field trip. Look at these sand formations. There are handprints everywhere. Oh, my God, someone has been faking Longshore Drift! Oh, look, this sounds like another one of your weird conspiracy theories. Not this time, Mike. This time, I've got proof. You do not have proof. Oh, my God. 
Longshore Drift. It's all a hoax, Mike. Who would want to do that? <laughs> the kids are spending hours learning about something that isn't even a thing, Mike. They have to know. Paula, don't do this. You don't tell them. I will. <laughs> we have a Code 6, Longshore Drift. I repeat, Code 6. <laughs> What did you say? Who are you? His Highness, Lord Geography. <laughs> Tell the children that Longshore Drift is a hoax, eh? She's just a teaching assistant. She's reached code six. She's only part-time. She'll find out soon enough. <laughs> I don't understand. If Longshore Drift is a hoax, then why do we teach it to the kids? Because geography don't isn't real. system of levers and pulleys. <laughs> what about Antarctica? Antarctica's just green screen. <laughs> what about social geography? What about aging populations? Urban sprawl? You can do a lot with mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> Oxbow lakes? Of course Oxbow lakes are real. Where the fuck would the standing water go? <laughs> <laughs> She's ready. Commence initiation process. Volcanoes, camp planning, plate tectonics, volcanoes, <laughs> camp planning. Geography is a lie, including snow. Paint's just paper. <laughs> rain. Battles water. Acid rain. Lilt. <laughs> Conflict in the Middle East. More lilt. <laughs> initiation complete. I don't understand. Why have you done all of this? His Highness invented geography in order to sell textbooks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't know how many jokes I've had to write to make this thing work. <laughs> jokes? But why would you have to write any jokes? Look familiar? <laughs> Sides aren't going to congest themselves, are they? <laughs> Consider yourself initiated! Oh my god, I don't believe it. The whole of geography, it's all a lie. What, next thing you're going to tell me is that business studies was invented by aliens? We have a code sword, <laughs> code sword! <laughs> It's about that grape. Which 
right there. Yeah. The one in, in the dark t-shirt. Yeah. yeah. And the tight white pants. Oh, no. Nice. Tight, tight, tight. Tight. That shit is tight. <laughs> is singled out in an audience context. <laughs> Specifically this context, yeah. <laughs> he gets up on stage and does a flamboyant dance. Wow. <laughs> Do 
well in the exam unless you get enough rest. But, Mum, I need to learn these facts! No buts, Jimmy. You're never going to do well. <laughs> to your exam. Your time starts in half an hour ago. <laughs> Did you just call your teacher mum? <laughs> How embarrassing! <laughs> <laughs> hey, Clara Schmidt! The girl you've always fancied. It's me, Jimmy. Do you want to go on a date? Oh, Jimmy, I could never go out with a boy who doesn't wear any trousers. <laughs> For some reason, I've forgotten to put on trousers today. <laughs> I'm with Pierre now. Not snotty Pierre. I'm trilingual and I won't stop telling everyone. <laughs> Come on, did he kick the ball? Score the goal! Yeah. I thought this was an exam. Score the goal! Alright, but I'm talking in the exam! <laughs> My legs, they won't run quick enough. <laughs> That's why you never make the team. That's why you're all be a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Lady Winterly, what do you think? Lady Winterly. I'm Lady Winterly in the school play, but I've forgotten all my lines. For the last time, Lady Winterly, will you put your cock away? <laughs> <laughs> and now I've got my dick out in front of all the year above. Oh, Jimmy, why are you never wearing any trousers? Pierre always remembers him. I'm really sexy and sporty and I never even revived. <laughs> and I've got a massive wang, 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 wang. Oh, it was just a horrible dream. I'm going to be late for my exam. Mom! Oh, yeah, shout Jimmy, you little worm. Some trousers. Hurry up! Snotty Pierre is waiting downstairs to give us a lift to school. But Snotty Pierre can't drive. Of course he can. Do you think I'd marry a man who can't drive? Oh no, Snotty Pierre's my new dad. Wag, 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 wag! King and Queen of the Pelicans, we go. Is this <laughs> creepy? No, no, this is getting weird now. <laughs> Wait. Jackie, you look in your room. Don't get that shit, sister. I told you once, I told you twice, but then I still have cinnamon spice.
Susan here says what really brought sunshine to the town was the various guest speakers who visited. Um, before I start, I just want to say how um, great I think Jacqueline Wilson is. <laughs> and how good a job she's doing bringing joy to children. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will start now. <laughs> Hello, my name is Jacqueline Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> why am I here to talk to you? No, why am I here to talk to you? <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm doing a talk here at Pugsley Primary School. I have some things I want to clear up. <laughs> First of all, put your hands up if you like Trace Beaker. <laughs> put your fucking hands up. <laughs> oh, it's everyone. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, <laughs> now, put your hands up if you like. Harry Potter. Oh, it's nobody. Oh. <laughs> yes, yes, I agree that Harry Potter's a piece of fucking shit. <laughs> it's the worst novel in the whole fucking world. <laughs> Sometimes I forget the name of the stupid bitch who goes to Harry Potter. <laughs> Lol, JK. <laughs> Um, I can exclusively share with you that a lot of famous writers are actually total dicks. <laughs> For instance, I once shared an office with Anthony Horowitz, which was terrible because he would run up and shout Stormbreaker in my face. <laughs> <laughs> I was live in. <laughs> <laughs> But one day I found out he was allergic to gnats. So that lunch, when no one was looking, I crept in and very carefully hit him for fucking massive plates. <laughs> uh, so I guess you could say revenge is a dish. <laughs> But even Horowitz agreed to Harry Potter's a shit book. <laughs> As do many others. For instance, my celebrity friend Adele once actually tried to push JK off into the sea. I guess she really would have been rolling in the deep. <laughs> <laughs> To prove that I'm still up to date with what the 21st century children who just watch porn all the time want. <laughs> I've decided to rewrite one of the most boring bits of literature in the world, so that is cool. It's just a national anthem. <laughs> and I've done this with the help of my favourite rapper exhibit. <laughs> Save the queen if you know what I mean. Gotta build her a hive, gotta keep her alive. If she died, things being menace. We lost a massive game of chairs. She's all fit, I'm not being funny. When I say I get hot, when I see her on the money, think she's bad, and you've gone by me. She'll fuck you up with a big swan army. Queen's a hot dog, have a baby with her, I'll win, Kate. See her on the stamp, because stamp with a lick, she's a first class girl, this stamp's got a snake. The world's gonna end, we're all gonna die. I fall to my knees, I look to the sky, I said, Oh, look, don't be mean. Yeah, please, I'll save the queen. I've been Jacqueline Wilson, thank you for your time. <laughs> Smokehouse. 
want. That's right. Dead or alive. Now, are you... <laughs> <laughs> Are you crying right now? It's just, uh, I ain't never been wanted before. <laughs> when I was a kid, and my papa was dying, he gave me some advice.
came back for me. No, I just left my hat. <laughs> You're a dick. I know where I had to go. I'm sorry. <laughs> Has 
burnt down the granary. Ah, so you're telling me that a man who used to make sweet honey. Well, oh, 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 Before we only come to his pyramid. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. So, wouldn't it be a shame that someone would build a pyre, yes, a, a light a pyre, and drown the baker of honey? <laughs> Could I be any more pyre? <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't know what irony is. That's heavy sarcasm. Oh, sarcasm. Well, <laughs> it's like an old friend greeting you with soup. <laughs> oh, who am I kidding? All my ancestors were ironic. My father, my father's father, even his father. And to think... The first Edgar to be labelled Edgar the Ironic can't even grasp the basic concept of irony. Could there be a... Oh my God! It's a quiet situation. It's ironic. All this time, I've been carrying a jar of money. Enjoy your tea, girls. <laughs> I fucking hate volunteering. <laughs> Ira, are you getting enough? What? Are you getting enough? Of what? You know. Massive dick. <laughs> Arthritis. <laughs> 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 
I do. I'm good, good. I was wondering, um, would you fancy playing the koala game? Oh, cool, yeah. I, I, I was thinking maybe this time uh, I could be the koala and you could be the tree, because you know we usually yeah. do it. Um, I think we should do it that you're the tree and then I'm the koala. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, like yeah. usual. Yeah. 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 Okay.
growing up, I used to be in a rock band um, called D Ream, uh, which actually had a very clever title. Um, so if you just take one part of it out, you get something that we all experience every night. <laughs> Loneliness. <laughs> Myself, please, gentlemen. But you'll know cloning's imperfect if you read the scientific article. So what went wrong, you might be suspicious. He's made of millions of tiny mutated particles. And he's made of hundreds and thousands. <laughs> Dennis Quay. I'm a chiropractor in the local Pudgley area. 
Thought I'd come out here today, show you just how good a chiropractor I am. Advertise my practice. You, sir, what's your name? Kieran. Kieran? Yeah. How'd you like your back felt up by a stranger, Kieran? <laughs> Are you good? <laughs> I'm the ruddy best, mate. <laughs> Come on up here, big hand for Kieran. <laughs> Where are you from, Kieran? Uh, Canterbury. 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 Nice. Have many chiropractors around there? Thank you. Yeah. Right. Please step into my chiropractor's office. <laughs> Sit down in my chiropractor chair. <laughs> I'll give you a quick routine examination, all right? Good. <laughs> you feel that there, mate? Yep. That's your left anterior splionates. <laughs> it's all knotted up, Kieran. Um, have you been sitting down recently at all? <laughs> Yeah? At a desk, perhaps? A little bit, yeah. Right. In front of a computer? A laptop, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And are you left-handed? Yeah. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> so your left anterior splenitis, Kieran, it's all knotted up. Uh-huh. Yeah. So what I'd advise from this point onwards is for you to stretch out and just clear your browser history, because that's a nasty... <laughs> <laughs> it's, a pretty, it's a pretty serious condition, Kieran. <laughs> but there's, there's quite a straightforward solution, alright? Okay? I'm just going to apply a massive amount of pressure to your jaw. <laughs> So on the count of three, I'm going to put my entire body weight into your jaw. You're going to hear a loud cracking noise and a pretty sharp tear. Sound alright? Here we go, mate. Actually, mate, I'm 90% sure if I'd done that, you'd be dead. <laughs> I've left my chiropractor book at home, so I've no idea how to sort that out. <laughs> in order to save face, I'm going to throw in a quick realignment of the spine. Sound good? Yeah. Great. You stand up for me, sir. Just lie over the front of this chair. <laughs> Hands on the floor, knees on the floor, yeah? your back, strictly professional. <laughs> you keep your eyes on the floor. <laughs> feel that there, mate? Yeah, I feel it. <laughs> That's the weakest point of your spinal cord. <laughs> on the count of three. <laughs> I'm going to put what can only be described as a fuck ton of pressure <laughs> into your lower back. We're going to hear several small popping noises and something like a thunderclap. <laughs> Here we go, mate. One! Two! Fortnite! 
bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> My friend will be here. 
but I must warn you, he has something of a foul demeanor. <laughs> 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 what have you got there? I'm just whipping this moose. <laughs> I think it's time to get down. <laughs> oh, shake your booty! <laughs> Write any jokes, it was all it was just weird dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> I did. It did actually help my knee. Oh, shit. oh my god, but we we sent off the script, we're gonna have to perform that exact sketch to the BBC Comedy Festival. Yeah, it's fine, it's fine, go away. We, we can't change the script! Something else. We can't I don't, we can't sorry, sorry, we can't. we're gonna try something out. <laughs> Remember to have 
have some cake and children. <laughs> it is never too early to start investing in a pension scheme. <laughs> I've been Emilia Sørensen, and when you're all with friends, the fun never ends. <laughs> Improper financial trading. <laughs> Discussion and we're going to give the BBC Skeptic another go. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, we couldn't change the script. Hey, just do it, man! Just do it! Yeah, so, <laughs> here we go. Same script.
yours bigger than grapefruits? <laughs> fucking the next to the star and fuck it. Pudgley <laughs> <laughs> Classic looks like geography isn't real. I'm Robert Gavin and Pudgley, we are back on air, baby. Yeah, baby no.